Hello once again. Today's lesson will be on something you do on a daily basis. Today, you will learn how to read a dialogue and answer the questions that follow. You will also be introduced to different types of dialogues. We will do some comprehension questions on dialogues from your pupil's book and past papers. You will definitely have to read dialogues and answer questions on them in your O-level paper. So, how do we read and understand a dialogue? You must have an idea about the structure of a dialogue if you have gone through your textbooks. Almost every unit starts with a dialogue and is sometimes followed by comprehension questions. You would have noticed that a dialogue can be between two or among several people. Let's glance through page one of your pupil's book, Unit 1. The first activity is a dialogue or a conversation between two friends, Vikum and Shamindu. When you look at it, the names are indicated on the left side of the page, followed by a dash to present what each boy says in direct speech. Direct speech is reported speech or the actual words of the speaker. Depending on who the speakers are, the language used can be different. This conversation is between two friends, so the language is somewhat casual. There are questions and exclamation marks and even some interjections to make the dialogue very natural. Words are contracted too because the language used is spoken. It's very easy to read a text that is written in the format of a dialogue. It is interesting and is a great way to find out information about a specific topic. If you are in the habit of reading plays, you would notice that they are all written using dialogues. That's called a script. Let's look at Unit 4 of your pupil's book, Activity 1, page 35. The dialogue given is in the form of a television interview. Let's read it together, shall we? Activity 1, Act Out. Practice this television interview. Good morning once again. We join you in your favourite programme for a better tomorrow. Our topic today is polythene and the environment. To share some valuable ideas on this topic, we have with us one of the eminent environmentalists in the country, Mr. Sunil Veerasinghe. Welcome to the program, Mr. Veerasinghe. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. As we are all aware, polythene has become a major environmental issue. Talking about polythene and the environment, what is the biggest problem related to polythene? The biggest problem is that most types of polythene don't decay. They accumulate in the environment and that, in turn, creates many problems. I'm sure our viewers would like to know about these problems. Could you tell us something about them? Well, it seems that a lot of people have the habit of throwing polythene bags carelessly and haphazardly into the environment. This often leads to problems like land pollution and land infertility. Polythene also blocks sewage systems and water sources. Another problem is that rainwater collected in polythene bags provides breeding grounds for mosquitoes. This is really unfortunate. We will be living in an extremely unhealthy environment if such a situation is to continue. Can't we burn polythene instead? Unfortunately, that doesn't help much. Burning polythene creates a lot of harmful gases and substances. They are harmful to all living things. How about the effect of polythene on animal life? Sadly, a lot of animals die after eating polythene as it is not digested. So what are your suggestions? Should we stop using polythene? Not exactly. I think we should try to minimize the use of polythene. Taking reusable bags when marketing is a possible way of reducing the use of polythene. Recycling polythene is another solution. Reduce, reuse and recycle. We should all think about it. With that thought, we come to the end of our program. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Veera Singer. Thank you for inviting me. We hope to meet our viewers next week. At the same time, have a good day. You would have noticed that because it is 
In an interview, the interviewer asks questions and Mr. Sunil Veerasinghe gives lengthy answers. He gives very precise, factual information on the use of polythene and how it is harmful to our environment. Now, let's complete the questions given in Activity 2. Most types of polythene do not decay. This can be matched with they accumulate in the environment. Number 2. Polythene bags are thrown into the environment. This should be matched with it causes land pollution. The third statement in A is Rainwater is collected in polythene bags. This causes mosquitoes to breed in them. Number four, animals eat polythene. This should be matched with they die because of undigested polythene. The last statement is polythene bags are collected in water sources. The statement that can be matched with this is water is polluted. Let's look at the next question. Find the adjectives used in the conversation to describe these words. The first one is done for you. Remember, adjectives describe a noun. We can say big problem. Yes, after reading this interview, we realize that pollution is a big problem. The next one is valuable ideas. We are told that Mr. Veera Singer will share some valuable ideas in this next interview. The next one is land pollution. The next one should be eminent environmentalist. We are informed at the beginning in the introduction that Mr. Sunil Veera Singer is an eminent environmentalist. The final adjective that should be filled in is harmful. We are informed that polythene creates a lot of harmful gases. You can easily find these adjectives by scanning the text. If you want to know more about scanning, you can look at one of our previous lessons on skimming and scanning. Let's now look at question 3. You are asked to find the sentences and phrases used to start the TV program. The presenter states, Good morning. Once again, we join in your favorite program for a better tomorrow. Next, we have to find out how the interviewer introduces the environmentalist to the viewers. The interviewer says, we have with us one of the eminent environmentalists in the country. In question three, we are asked to find a phrase that asks the environmentalists suggestions on something. The interviewer says, so what are your suggestions? In the fourth question, we are asked to find a phrase that disagrees with an idea. You can write down the phrases made by Mr. Veera Singer when he says, unfortunately, that doesn't help much. And finally, you are asked to find a phrase that ends the TV program. You can write down the phrase, we hope to meet our viewers next week at the same time. Have a good day. Lastly, you are asked to find the adverbs in the conversation. Let's look at the text and list them out. Remember, an adverb is a word or a phrase that modifies or qualifies an adjective verb or another adverb or a word group expressing a relation of place, time, circumstance, manner, cause and degree. Some of the adverbs that could be listed out are highlighted. Now let's read a very different type of dialogue. Let's look at Unit 3 in our pupils book. Activity 4, page 28. When we read it, you will realize how different the style and language is in this dialogue. This conversation in, is amongst friends who comment on a documentary that they had watched. Let's read it together. Activity 4, speaking. Read aloud the conversation the friends had after watching the documentary and answer the questions that follow. Well, that was good. 
Yes, it was. Did you see the beautiful scenery they had captured? Yes, I wish I could go back to our past, to the time of our ancient kingdoms. Me too. Shall we discuss our booklet now? What about the presentation? All right, what's your plan? Shall we decide on the topics first and then find the necessary information? Oh good, I see your point, Suresh. Then I'll write on beautiful places of the country. Very well, Madina. I'll find information on our kings. Leave some topics for us too. All right. I'll work on important historical places. I want to write about endemic animals, birds, trees. Ah, you'll have a lot of work to do. No, that's fine. We each have something to do. You left out my favorite topic. What's that? I'm sure it's technology. Yes, you got it. Now we can do a detailed presentation. You would have noticed that this dialogue is full of question marks. Filler words like well, interjections, contractions and a variety of punctuation marks. All this is used to make the conversation very casual and realistic. When we talk amongst friends, we don't use sophisticated language. Let's look at the questions that follow the text. The first question is, what was the purpose of their discussion? Well, actually, the purpose of the discussion is given at the very end of the text. They have to do a detailed presentation of our country. The past kings and the historical places, the endemic animals, birds and trees. Let's now look at the second question. What are the topics they discussed? If we start from the top of the text, we can pick out some of the topics that they discussed. The beautiful scenery that was captured. The ancient kingdoms. They are also supposed to discuss about a booklet. The beautiful places in the country. Information on the kings. Important historical places. Endemic animals, birds and trees. And finally, they ask how many friends were engaged in the conversation. Well, that is easy. Radhika, Rikaz, Vihangi, Suresh, Suranga, Kishan and Madina. So that makes seven. Since you have a rough idea about the dialogues, let's attempt some tasks that you can find in your past papers. Let's look at 2019 O-Level paper, paper one, test two. You are asked to fill in the blanks the words are given in the box next to the sentences. Look at the question carefully. You are asked to write the letter of the correct word in the blanks. Let's do it together. Rashmi. Wow, what a lovely photograph. Is this your family? Ajani. Yes, it was taken at my sister's wedding. Who do you think is sitting next to me? Rashmi. Mm, it must be your twin sister. Yes, you are right. Rashmi, two of you look the same and you both are wearing frocks, aren't you? Is the boy wearing the red shirt your older brother? Ajani, no, he is the youngest, but he is very tall. Rashmi, your father and mother still look very young, don't they? Ajani, of course, thank you for the compliment. Now look at test 5 in the same paper. It is a conversation between Geet and his uncle. There are some questions that follow the text. I am sure you will be able to handle this section with ease. You are expected to write short answers, so don't waste your time writing full, complete answers. I am sure you found this lesson useful. If you would like to watch more lessons like the one you just watched, please subscribe to our channel. Our next lesson will be on writing a dialogue. So do subscribe. Have a wonderful day and goodbye.